I want to start with the, the preliminaries, which is first, I want to honor the father of this house, Bishop and Pastor Aris. Thank you so much for the honor and the privilege to accord to the couple's ministry to lead today's services together with the leadership of the church. Thank you so much for the trust you have in us that whatever we are going to say in all services, it will be according to the will of God for you this morning. Also, I would like to thank the couple's ministry, uh, the leadership of Dr. There are two doctors, Zipporah and uh, Peter Shege. They are our, our chair for the couple's ministry. Also for our pastor, our line pastor, Pastor Edward Murwa and uh, Pastor Faith. Thank you so much for the trust you have. Also, we have also served under Pastor Kebera and Esther. I can see you there. there. We, you, we honor you. You have been leading us before very well. May God bless all of you. Today now we go to the word. And uh, given that we are in the couple's ministry, we have a call to look after the families. See, that is why the couples are formed, so that they can have a family. See, dear? But today we will not talk about the couple, we will talk about the family. So we, are, we would like to talk about the family, and therefore, according to the committee, the executive committee of the couple's ministry, we were given the task to select among the topics which were selected by the committee and prayed for, and I settled on uh, God's purpose for the family. God's purpose for the family. For those particularly who may want to write it down, th that is the topic we'll have to deal with today. Uh, some of you may ask why I have three devices. One is handwritten. The other one is uh, a small phone. The other one is a bigger one. The, I will want to explain. One is that just in case the power goes, it is here. <laughs> The, the other one is the one I'm using now. But the other one, it is the Bible. So when I'm told uh, lift your Bible, if I lift this, just know it's my Bible. <laughs> so at least I've explained myself. Now, we, we need to go to the Word, and I would like to ask ourselves. Look at your neighbor. Don't ask them any question, but look at them and ask yourself, who, what is a family? Don't talk to them. Just ask yourself, what is a family? And uh, there are many definitions of a family. Sinikweli, if you go to the court, the court now, if you go to the court, and uh, you are looking for them to define for you a family, they may define in a completely different way than if you come here to church. Sinikweli, more so, if you go to Pastor Dan and Rosemary, you are my friends also, so I'll use you also. If you go to their home, you'll find that they also define family differently. Why do I say this? Because in their case, the family is a relationship by blood or marriage. And that includes both nuclear and extended family. If you come to DCIK, I want to use my pastor... Uh, <laughs> let me allow me to be using people. Uh, Pastor Edward, you ask him, who is a family member of DCIK? The definition will be completely different from the one I was given by Pastor Dan in relationship to his family where he's born and brought up. Nikweli. So what does that tell you? You can belong to different families at different times or at the same time. And today, I would like us to look at a few definitions of the family. A family is normally defined in many cases, generally as a group of individuals who God has brought together to provide a natural environment for development of their children and well-being of the family members. Um, ask yourself, who are the children in DCIK if you use that as a family? See, to me, I'm definition mingi. 
I don't want to ask you to tell me or to tell your neighbor, just ask yourself, who are the children in the family of DCIK? The other one is a traditional one, the one we have talked about with, uh, with uh, Pastor Dan, the blood related and by marriage. I don't think the, the, there is now the, the other one which you, you are thinking about when I adopt. That is a legally defined marriage. Because you are not related to that child, but you have adopted that child. So they are, you are enforced by law. And that is why there are those paperwork you have to do to define that. Then, in that case, what does family mean to God? What is it? Therefore, it follows that family is the center of God's plan for happiness and progress of his children. That is why we find ourselves, when you go to your office, I have a friend called uh, uh, Josiah Zuki. When he goes to his office, he belongs to the family of colleagues. See, there are rules and procedures which happen there. Those are, that, that is what happens there. Therefore, that is formed by God for happiness and progress. So, God has designed the family as the first source of spiritual training, preparation for life. Also spiritual inspiration and motivation. See on query. So and also for spiritual productivity. What does the family serve in God? Therefore, the family serves as the first channel of God's blessings and liberations a place where he can establish a direct contact and relationship with each member of that family. We can pause there and reflect. Do you have a direct relationship with the head of that family? Who is the head of the entire family? It's God. Sindio. And he has told us that he established it to have a direct contact and a relationship with you. If I may take you back, you remember your parents, Simuna Wajua, all of you where you came from. Did your parents love you? How do you know they loved you? Ebu one day when you are small, now let us go back behind, when uh, Salah, my friend Salah was growing up uko Maunarok, near some, some forest. And she delays to come back from the forest to fetch firewood. What would happen to that family that day? It would be in chaos because one of them is missing. Sinikweli, how, how would be that family? I keep on asking myself about the family of the prodigal son. When the boy rioted and he left, We'll talk about that at the end. But when the boy rioted and left, do you think the father and the mother were in peace? Even the brother, do you think he was also in peace? We will ask that question. Just hold that thought. We finish hivi. Sitivo tunabiyango na bishop. Unaikanyanga hivi. But ikisaulika, remember you will answer your neighbor when, <laughs> when you are out. So, in our words, family is supposed to provide the following. One, it is supposed to, fight, to provide a physical place. The other one is emotional support. The other one is social support. You will also find that there is also economic empowerment or support. There is also spiritual needs are met for the members of that particular family. I would like us now to look at the word of God. Where do we draw this from? Because we have talked about God, but we have not read the word of God. <clears throat> we are going to look at our main text will be Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. That is New King James Version. And then, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living and moving, that moves on earth. Why am I reading and posting? I, I don't know whether you, are, you, you got that I'm reading and posting, not because I'm not able to read all of it in a hurry, but it is because that is where the message is. From that text, you'll find there are four principles which God has put as a purpose for a family. Number one, to reflect the image of God. The family is to reflect the image of God. Number two, to conduct the government for God. This is what they are calling dominion. The other one is to produce and raise a godly heritage. And finally, number four, is to nurture God's people. I would like us to quickly look through each and every one of them. Uh, they, they are actually displayed on the screen by the media team. So these are the brief you could have a look. So we want to look at the, how to reflect the image of God. If you look at the text, it says, in our image. What does that tell you? God was not alone. Sin query. God was not alone. He was God with others. Who are those who are there? Those are the questions you need to keep on asking because there is a God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So after God created the universe, the earth, plant life, and of course all animals, he created a new creation. This new creation is different because he formed uh, but, and also eventually God, but God himself breathed breath of life into man's nostril. He did that intentionally. That is being intentional. By this act, when he said our image, and then he breathed, what did God do? God impacted to the humans a little piece of himself. Have you ever considered yourself you are a piece of God? Now this time around, I'll allow you to talk to your neighbor. My friend Muraidi, you can talk to the neighbor, the two neighbors next to you. Tell them, what piece of God do you have? Do you think you have? Which one? <laughs> Masharia and Anne, which piece? Do you show the attributes of God in you? So you need to know the attribute of God so that you are also able to, to show the attribute of God. Um, I am an engineer. You, you heard that story. And uh, when we do many things, like when I was at the university, there are some things we did many years ago. And even in my class, one of the lecturers wanted us to do, one of us, that was many years ago, to do a project on facial recognition. Because when you do the engineering I did, it is the one which is showing all those things. So he wanted us to do a project on facial recognition. Those are like more than almost 30 years ago. Actually, it will be that in two years. What does that tell you? That time, there was nothing formed. But I think in that lecture, or in somebody else, the peace which God had put in him, he wanted to trigger something within the other pieces. And one of the pieces will eventually form that. Now there is facial recognition. That time, we found like it was weird. Imagine the guy who thought about calling across the Atlantic. Have you ever thought? 
Maybe he never lived to see the kind of phone you have in the church. In fact, most of the time, even the church services are interrupted because the phone has rung. You can imagine. The person calling you is on the other side, Australia, maybe even in Russia or in another country. That imagination could not have been there to many people. But the peace which fell in that guy, he imagined. There is another time <clears throat> I was telling the, uh, another friend of mine that the Wright brothers, you know, you know Wright brothers, do you know the story of the Wright brothers? If they wake up today, they would wish they never invented, they tried to invent a plane. Because they are the ones used for bombing and everywhere. They are moving all over. Because that was not their objective. Then they wanted to move faster to another location. It was not meant to carry bombs. It was not meant to go and attack. It was meant to be a means of transport. But you see, within that peace of God, it was corrupted. So you know who corrupts these things? So you know Sita mtaja. I had intentionally said I'll not see mtaji. Nataka we umjue. So in that case, therefore, it means that God created you. In a, being, in a state of being part physical, part spiritual, where spiritual part is eternal or immortal. So we are not transient like animals. That today you are there, tomorrow you are not there. No, we are not. Tell your neighbor you are not transient. That is why God said, let us make man in our own image, image after our likeness. So what are the attributes of God which I should find in you? Would like us to mention a few. One of them is love, joy, peace, security, kindness, and all those positive attributes or positive God-like qualities you have. Also, that is what I was explaining earlier on, you possess superior intelligence you possess curiosity beyond what animals have. You also have complex desires and the need for companionship and the relationship. All these are giving meaning to life. And of course, it also draws you to God for worship. Unfortunately, when some of us are pushing ourselves to worship God, Others are worshipping other things. That is why you saw, even when Moses eh, disappeared kidogo, unajua hile manena ya wazee kuenda kutafuta kazi, uh, kuenda kutafuta, to, to look for something for the family of God at, at, at the Mount Sinai. See, you know what they did? See, they made their own uh, golden images. Because they wanted to worship something they can see and feel. Because the one who was connecting them with God had left. Do you see that? So they were associating God with Moses. They were not associating God's presence all the time. The second one I had said about conduct government for God. That they rule and have dominion and subdue. So you are supposed to operate on earth instead of God. Are you operating instead or with God? Or both? <laughs> I leave you to think about that. Conduct the government for God to have dominion over all the rest of other creation. So we can find this concept in Psalms uh, 8, 6, and also in Hebrews 6. You have made him, in, uh, in Hebrews says, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet you'll find that this is repeated many places. So human beings possess the image of God and many God-given attributes, as I said earlier on, or abilities, and are only creation on land capable of having dominion. We have seen that the lions try to go and carve out an area where they will be eating the animals who live there. But most cases, you'll find that in that place they have carved Hyenas and many things else are there. They are dominating. They are not able to dominate the entire place like human beings. That is why you have seen that human beings are dominating everywhere. At the same time, they're most destroying 
most of the places. So, in order for God's creation, so we were supposed to build government to maintain order. We are also supposed to develop severization. This is also a piece of God within you, which is telling you this is the kind of severization we have. Yesterday I was listening to, uh, to another muse on, on uh, something which was sent. He is calling himself Kanairo, Muse wa Kanairo. He was talking in uh, Sheng. Is it Sheng or it's called Tebe Sheng? Where is uh, my, my son, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, not Imano, there is another one which belongs to them. <laughs> Steve, where are you? <laughs> oh, yes, he's there. He, he tells me about those things. <laughs> uh, he's also my son. You, you hear the sons are many that way. So, uh, the man who was talking, actually, he's communicating something. In fact, he mentioned what they are calling 500, 100 shillings now, what they are calling 200, 300. And I can see a lady who is attesting to that story. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether if we live long enough as our age, we'll hear what they are saying. If we don't, style up. Send uh, query. So we, we become friends more uh, stiff. <laughs> so the optimal object of God is uh, having dominion, not to make man himself a God. I, I want you to note that. You have dominion not to make yourself a God. So you maintain the worship, you maintain the service, and also glorifying the one and only true God all the time. The one true sovereign king throughout the whole of the creation. However, this part we have failed. Haven't we failed as a, a humanity? We have. Then, uh, God then did this. He realized that he has given a lot of commands to his man, the man he created first. But this man, after he took him to the animals, he gave all the animals names. What did this mean? Why did God not name the animals? Have you ever asked yourself that question? That God uh, took a lot of work um, um, creating the entire world and all the animals. But then he creates one, one, one being, and takes him there and tells him, whatever you call them, they will be. What does that tell you? This is authority. Whatever you name, you have authority over it. Do you know that? That is why ukipata watoto unawapea jina yako. Ama ile unataka, sindio? You will have authority over those children. So, <laughs> but God realized these are not fit. So in Genesis, he said we need to help, to, to make a help fit. Help fit. Maybe we can get uh, Genesis 18. Genesis 2, 18, sorry. Let it, it is not good that man should be alone. I'll make him a help, helper comparable to him. Continue. Or go to 23. 23 of the same. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep. No. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones. And flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she is taken out of man. Who named the woman? Who named the woman? Then there is a different connection between the woman who was made out of the rib and the animals. Do you see the connection? He is part of the family. Family of Adam. Sinequeli. And that is why, if you read me, I was reading it. When I read it, I, re I see Adam grinning with happiness. He's very happy. Hey, now this is... You see, what you told, you told your husband, or if you are a man, 
Abia huyu. <laughs> when you saw her or he saw you, see dio? Hiyo. <laughs> so the, the woman was created with the concept of marriage and family and that is where the family began. So to be fruitful it was meant to fulfill the command of being fruitful. Provide support. Uh, of course, domesticate the man. Because the man was in the, in the animal world. Only the woman who would domesticate this one, this animal. So ladies, can you clap for yourself? You are doing a good job. This guy, uh, Anne, he was living with animals. That one. <laughs> you are the one who has domesticated him. <laughs> Uyo ni rafiki yangu anaitwa Peter. <laughs> eh ni kweli? So it is, it gives us that is the where we got the first perspective on civilization. So the woman is the one who came with civilization. Tio ladies mke shout vizuri sana. You are the one. Man was not civilized. Do, do you see that story? I don't know whether ladies can hear that story. <laughs> so every family has a specific God-given calling and the purpose to fulfill. And some of the purposes are, of course, there will be specific qualities which, for you to achieve the purpose for God. One of them is love, acceptance of others, placing a high value to life, self-esteem, security, all those, including justice, because our God is just. Um, I want to go to number four because I can see my time is doing very well. This one I will not talk so much, but you see that we are to produce and lace a godly heritage. Multiply and fill the earth. Remember God at the beginning he said, our image. Sinikweli. So therefore, what are you going to fill and multiply the earth with? The image of God. Tukopamoja. You are filling the earth with the image of God. So one of the most important purposes of the is to raise our godly heritage that is God fearing, morally mature, eh, eh, economically sound, spiritually filled, righteously, righteousness working, and God worshipping. Of course. Then concentrate on building the character. So you'll find that in Genesis 12 3, it says, In thee, shall all families of the earth be blessed. This is the channel where the families of earth are blessed. Tukapamoja watu wangu. Are we together? Um, the utmost purpose of the family, uh, of a righteous family, is to bless all the other families on the earth. So if you find yourself cursing others, you are not doing what was meant to be. What do you bless? Don't allow the answer to come back. <laughs> because some people you may not want to bless them, but God is calling you to. So he has granted an eternal purpose and life-giving ministry for every family. It is both eternal and life-giving. So if you find your family is not life-giving, or it is not leading to eternity. And remember, the family we are talking about is not just that can you clear? It is not just the extended. Even those other families you belong, the ones for legal, the ones which are like this one here, the family of God. And like now, uh, I want to ask you a simple question. Why didn't you go to full gospel in the morning? Are they not a family of God? See, they are. But you belong to the nuclear family of DCI. That is why I never go to Sam's place. I know where uh, the parents of Mama Sam stay. I never go there. I always find my way to my rural home. The same happens to all of you. So, even if you belong to the bigger family, let us start building the smaller unit for the good of the society. As long as the smaller unit has the heritage, then it follows. Even the country will be in peace. Even the judgments will be fair. 
Even the accusations will be correct. <laughs> and of course, there will be no accusations because you will not be going out to do what is wrong for a family member. As long as you know he's a family member, will you do it? Ha. So, what has caused us to, be, to fail is because sin and selfishness, fear and insecurity, all these things have caused us. And in fact, we become self-seeking. So, what should love do? God has made us dependent on and dedicate a wholesome, positive and loving relationship with interconnectivities. And God has designed a family as a safe zone. Safe zone. Like um, last time there were some there were some Gen Z demonstrations and Zimmerman was really affected at night. I never had Millicent learn to Salome's place. She ran to the home. Sinequeli. Uh, because that is a safe zone. Even if uh, <laughs> Salome's house was next there, even if she entered, it was a short shelter. And she was not even there. She was there physically. She was thinking about Keith, thinking about uh, Pastor Kaunda. Are they safe? Sinikweli, Pastor. Why? Because the family is a safe zone. And that is why God has put you to make it safe. Are you making you as safe? So God has tried to call us back to himself by... He said in John 3.16, which can be placed up, this is a call we normally use as Gideons uh, with uh, Baba Sam here. I don't know how many others belong to the Gideons ministry where we give out Bibles. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we should stop uh, pursuing things like money, piling possessions, because those shows that you have rejected or you have moved out of, or either you are rejected in a family. And therefore, you are seeking solace elsewhere. You remember the story I told you, I'll tell you about. That boy, the prodigal son, he was following Many other, he was looking after, looking after his insecurities. He had a lot of mistrust for the family. Maybe he thought if the father dies before he can give him his inheritance, the elder brother will take away all of it. You know that story. Uh, let us, let us. Now, in conclusion, I would like to say this: that the man and woman were to be stewards and shepherds of God's world. I like the, 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 the sermon of last week on stewardship. And there are a few things I picked from it which I want to say. This is Matthew 25, so we will not look at it. This is understanding that God is the ultimate owner and we, we are just stewards for the people who belong to him. I don't know. God is the ultimate owner. So there are, the, the things I captured, uh, one of them is that, one of the stewards is that we are stewards to know the children belong to God first. They are not yours. You are just a steward. So even where you find yourself, the ones who are looking after you, they are steward of you. Meshika. The other one is a steward must know the master. So if you want to steward your own family, please come to God. Accept Christ. Then you'll be able to steer his own creation. They are not, you are not supposed to know God from a distance. You must be there. Steward will be held accountable by merciful maker. You'll be held accountable. It's like when you have, been, uh, you have gone astray. Or let, let's use a, a, a simpler example where you could understand if you find your child has a boil, what do you do? Suna katanga unatoa ama unampereka hospitali. Na ukimpereka hospitali unajua atafanywa the same. Atakatwa na itole. Do you do it because you hate that child? It is not that you don't want him to feel pain. You want him to get well. It is out of love. And that is why you'll find some of these things will happen because 
of love. Then finally, the, the, the stewardship must let go. Given that you are servants and you, have, you are stewards, you are supposed also to release them to the world. So our Heavenly Father is the ultimate or the organizer. Actually, the, the family of God is organized the same as a nuclear family. And that is where now I come to the story of the, of the steward, the prodigal son, so that I can finish. I had asked the media, they will put it up. We want to look at uh, uh, Luke 15. Media? So that we can add. Uh, about the, the prodigal son. So what we want to say is that if you are a sinner, Someone has sinned. You become spiritually lost. You are spiritually lost if you are a sinner. Najua nyinyi nyote muyokoka. And someone has to return. He has to return to where? To the family. Which family? the family you belong to. Which is this family? Remember, one of the things I want you to remember is that uh, it is never too late to return. Is it too late? Like now, let me ask you, how many people would have imagined that the prodigal son would come after what he had done and squandered? What kind of reception would you, in your own eyes, think the father would have would have had to the son it would have looked otherwise but this father who is our God he is waiting for you I would like you to ponder within yourself and ask am I a prodigal son am I doing what the family is supposed to do we have talked about the family so today I would like us to I would like to call out people who want to be restored with Christ. Anyone among you who want to be restored by accepting Christ, you are learning to the Father. And the Father is waiting for you. Do you know that? Do you know the Father is waiting for you? Then do something now. Outside that door, it may be too it. Anyone who wants to rededicate or dedicate his life to Christ, please take an opportunity to come. Then I'll request all the I'll request the, the ministry team to come forward and then we are going to request them if you know you want to be reconnected in terms of your family. Maybe according to the God's purpose for your family. Just come and play with them so that you are reconnected back to God. It doesn't say that you are getting saved afresh. No, you want to rededicate the work of God, which God has entrusted you. You remember we have said you are a steward. Are you a steward? Do you want your children and family to thrive? Okay, I would like to ask uh, Pastor Murua, he's the one to pray for us after uh, those who want to come. I like the church uh, bishop. People are not, uh, they are following the, the, the four, <laughs> all of us. Don't be ashamed. Are you conducting the government of God? Do you reflect the image of God in your family? And also in the world, even in church, do you? The other question I want to ask you is, are you raising your children as a heritage? Are you multiplying the peace of God in the right way? Remember you have a peace of God in you. We are calling you, all of you, who would want to come out 
to be empowered? Are you nurturing God's people? And those are the people who are entrusted to you. Are you blessing more or you are cursing more? 